Okay, now I will work on the posts entity. Um, I will try to be as fast as possible since I tried to explain a lot of things in the previous one when we when we created the users entity. So the first thing is I will generate a module. So nest g it's a shortcut for generate mo for module. So it now will ask us the name. And when you create a module in Nest.js, it will create a folder for it inside the source. So I can I will type post the post module. Okay. And uh, Nest.js CLI does not have uh, does not create an entity for you. You can create a class and convert it, but I will just create it manually. So post.entity.typescript. And I will import a couple of things from type rm. I will import the entity, the column, the primary generated column, and many to one and join column I'll just click control s hopefully pretty here will work <laughs> yeah it worked now anyway so now I will start by creating by exporting a class called post entity entity and this class will have uh, well I will use the primary generated column decorator and the uh, property will be in an, called an ID this is the auto incremented ID so now I'll create a column so this column will be of length of 50 this it's the title of the post it's of type string um, let me save it and now I will create another column it will be of type text so you can pass uh, if you only will pass a type you can do it like this just a string so a body so body will be just a string uh, just a text type now I will use the one uh, the many to one uh, the creator which means that many instances of this entity belongs to one instance of another entity and that another entity would be user of type user entity so this needs uh, one uh, argument which should return the user entity so okay so this will create a this will create a uh, foreign key inside the posts will be called user id it's it will be camel cased so it won't have an underscore we can fix that but before uh, before this i will just uh, the second I will just show you a couple of more options the second argument will define how we will how we will access uh, the posts for each user so it's the second callback so it will have a user argument of type you can call it anything but of, with of type user entity so how we can refresh it user post right now post does not exist I will create it there so the third argument is the uh, couple of options with which uh, I will show you two of them so on update cascade on delete cascade as well okay so now we need to go to the user entity and add the part here that uh, links to the post 
and here we need to use not money to one one to money so one instance from this entity relates to many instances in the other entity so add one to many will be posts of type post entity an array of course and here the first callback will return the post entity and the second one will have a post variable of type post entity it will return the post dot user so how we know the each how we know the user of a specific post we just will go to the user property that's it and yes okay so to define uh, i said that we can define the name of the foreign key here uh, by default it will be the name of the other table then the id so and camel guest so you select so like this user id uh, the d is small so like this but uh, i don't want this behavior uh, we can add another decorator called which i imported called join column so this is optional in many to one relations but you need to add it in one to one and uh, many to many so name is user underscore id so i think now uh sorry yeah so here user dot posts so how to access the post of a specific user just type user dot posts um which i think this is yeah this is simple here and i think i forgot to add the at entity and i will pass to it an object name property posts or make it plural uh, i think one one cool thing we can create is uh I will create I will create a file called generic which will hold uh, I will just show you what could I'll put it inside a folder so generic so we might create another generic uh, types or classes so what this what this do uh, basically some columns in the each table will be each some columns will exist in almost all tables like created at updated at and might might be um uh, deleted at created by updated by all of these so we can put them inside a, a generic entity and inherit it and make other classes uh, extended so i'll create a generic sorry generic dot entity dot ts and how we can make that let me just copy the imports we don't need most of them we don't need the primary generated column many to one or joint or joint column we only need entity and uh, column sorry uh, i think we don't even need anything uh, except two new decorators i will just show you but let me just type the uh, name of the class so export the class generic class generic uh, entity so the first column I will show you, the first decorator I will show you is the updated date column and created date column so add created date column It will accept an object and the default value will be a, be a callback function which just returns the current time time stamp I hope I wrote it correctly and uh, the second property is type which will be type stamp and I will call it created at 
will be of type that. So I'll just copy it and paste it here. The second one will be of type of will be in the named updated add and it's the updated dead column and the same uh, the same object I will pass to the both of them. So now I think if you notice the TS lint is complaining. The variable name must be in lowercase. Yeah, this is true, but uh, here I'm representing a table, so I don't, uh, I don't this, I don't want this to be the case. So a quick fix for this: don't want to complain. Just below it, type a comment: ts lint on d7 next line variable. So that's it. Each time you see this and you don't want it to check it, uh, just see the so variable name is the role. So just disable just then disable next line, the name of the role. That's it. Uh, and now we need to extend this from both our posts and users entity. So extends. Yes. Now also here extends. Uh, okay, let's just create the rest of the your post module, the controller and the service, and let's inject the the repository for the users and import it inside the module. So, uh, nest generate a controller co. I will name it post. Nest CLI is smart enough to put it inside the post uh, folder and put it inside the controller array. Here. Which is nice. So nest generate a service. I'm not sure the shortcut for service. I think it's S. Mm, also post. And it's also smart enough to put it in the right place. And uh, another thing. If we, we need to go to the post module. And cite the import array. Imports array. We will type. We will we will uh, the first in the first index the type ORM module, then for feature the static function, I will pass to it an array, which is which uh, has the post entity. So by the way, a quick note: if you want to use an entity uh, from outside its module, just export it here. So export it here. So export. Uh, this and import it inside the module that contains the service you want to use the entity from. Yeah, just like Angular. But yeah, if, if you don't know the, this concept, uh, yeah, I think the next step is uh, to go here just to prepare to the next videos while uh, we are at it. So, constructor here, I will inject the repository. So, okay, add. Inject, inject the build repository. We'll pass to it the post entity. I'll make it private. Read only uh, read only A post repo. repository it's a, it's a generic it will accept a generic type so the post entity so as that and the final touch was which I forgot in the last video but I did it but uh, I did it uh, in the video but I forgot I forget it I am afraid I was afraid to, that I will forget it again so it's here so inside the entities uh, oops inside the entities uh, array in the app module so here I will add the post entity like this so uh, I believe now let me just run db over and run npm run start dev this should uh, 
now put all changes inside our database since we have the oh, okay, so since we have the synchronize equal true I can't move this <laughs> yeah since we have this synchronized will be equal to true since our environment is still dev at the moment let's see if there is any error I think no but I'm usually not right <laughs> Yeah, looks like everything is correct. And it mapped the post and the user controller, which is nice. And yeah, I, I think I showed you each controller you create using the CLI, it will put the name as the prefix for all the routes you will define. Anyway, let's go to the array, to, to the <laughs> database array. And where is it? I'll try to zoom. Yes. I like the view, very recommended. <laughs> um, so this is now our uh, our entities in the database. So as you can see, there is a relation between them. Here we have the foreign key inside the posts, and we have the created at updated at inside both uh, tables. Uh, let's take a quick look inside schema, public tables, posts. Let's go into properties. So yeah, I think everything looks fine. So yeah, we'll just in the next videos I'll just keep uh, working with the other entities. That's it. Thank you.